Hello and welcome back to the CPU Galaxy channel. Well, since single board computers are always appreciated from you in my videos, I prepared for today a very nice one. This is a massive industrial socket 8 SBC, which we will check out right now after the intro. Wow, look at this piece of beauty, a full-size single board computer which was definitely made for industrial applications. Made by Texas Microsystems in the mid of the 90s. Actually, this is the model P6000FX and after some research I was fortunately able to find some specifications in the web which gave me the possibility to build up a nice setup for you today. Obviously, we can see here a huge CPU already, so this board is equipped right now with an Intel Pentium 2 overdrive. Basically, this board is built for Pentium Pro CPUs from 166 to 200 MHz. Yeah, these Socket 8 Pentium Pros are huge ceramic monsters and for sure one of my favorite packages. The look and the size is just impressing. But the massive Socket 8 Pentium 2 upgrade is the most expensive overdrive you can get and it was actually the last upgrade CPU from Intel which was called overdrive. But there is a difference to the original Pentium 2. While the Pentium 2 in this typical SECC package has the level 2 cache running in the half of the CPU frequency, on the Pentium 2 overdrive the level 2 cache is running with 100% of the CPU clock and this makes it to the let's say better Pentium 2 at 333 MHz and a great upgrade possibility for the Socket 8 platforms. The Pentium 2 overdrive is not using a ceramic substrate as the Pentium Pro has. It uses a small PCB which contains the CPU, the cache and some voltage regulators. On top we have this huge cooling assembly with this big heatsink and a decent fan. Yeah, the Pentium Pro is using also two dies in its package. One is the CPU die as we can see here and the other one is the level 2 cache die. So a very very beautiful design and this was done because this huge cache could not get implemented in one die with the CPU together and to let it run with the CPU clock it needs to be as close as possible to reduce parasitics of the length from traces and wires. So this is a very very nice piece to show here. But now back to our SBC. Look at this high density of chips and parts on the PCB. Yeah, this is nuts. Each square millimeter is used and I can just guess how much layers this PCB must have. Yeah, next to the CPU we have this typical voltage regulator module we can find on almost all socket 8 boards. Over here four 32 pin RAM sockets equipped already with 128 MB of EDU RAM in total. We have one IDE con connector and for high performance purposes we got also an ultra SCSI controller from Adaptec here. Floppy controller, serial and parallel interfaces are completing here the setup to get everything you need for an industrial computer. Over here the Dallas RTC which was luckily placed in the socket. I put already a new one here because the battery was empty. Yeah, for the bus connection we can see here two different standards combined. First the 16-bit ISA connection and behind the extension to the PCI bus. Obviously we are missing here a video card. On the board we have just the Intel 440FX chipset and the Adaptec controller. This means we need to add a proper video card later to our setup. Also keyboard, mouse and USB connections are missing and I needed to improvise here a little bit. Over here we have a 4 pin header for USB where I made this cable and this connector which gives me at the end the possibility to transfer data much easier. Yeah, next to it we have some headers uh, for our PS2 mouse which is also not a standard connector and I had to assemble also here something special uh, to be able to connect my PS2 mouse. Yeah, the signals for the keyboard we can find over here on this uh, 8 or 9 pin connector. I was able to find out where the four wires needs to get connected. Yeah, plus 5 volt, ground, data signal and clock signal we need at the end for the keyboard. But this later on um, you will see where we connect these two. 
Yeah, well, really cool piece of technology and I'm looking already forward to torture this thing a bit under Windows 98. And for that we need of course a special backplate and by random I found one in my basement. It is equipped with an ATX and an AT power connector, four PCI slots, three ISA slots and two slots um, where you can put these cards where ISA and PCI is combined on. Over here our keyboard connector, well the keyboard signals are not routed through the bus, we have to connect it manually from the SPC to this board at this connector here and it's already printed on the silk layer where we need to connect which signal. Over here we got also some LEDs which are indicating all voltages, 5, minus 5, plus 12, minus 12 and 3.3 volts. We can connect here also two fans and yeah well if you use an ATX power supply we got here also the connector for a power switch. Yeah, even this backplate is already a very cool piece for today. Yeah, for the video card I will take the Matrox G450. It comes with 32 megabytes of video memory and a perfect 2D image quality. Also the 3D capabilities are not that bad on this uh, setup and for sure the CPU would be here the bottleneck at the end. But to make this uh, setup a little bit cooler I will use a 12 megabyte 3DFX Voodoo 2 um, for 3D gaming. Also here the limiting factor will be at the end the CPU. The sound card will be this sweet Creative Sound Blaster Live model SB100. This has great DOS compatibility and provides a decent sound quality as well. So and how can this setup get more cooler? Yeah, with a decent hard disk drive. I will take this uh, Seagate Cheetar 10K. It gives us uh, a storage capacity of 73 gigabytes and spins up to 10,000 revolutions per minute. Very cool. Yeah, enough now with talking about hardware. Let's build up our crazy setup. setup is ready now and we are good to go to switch on the system. But first let's check out with me together the cool and nice sound of a 10k hard disk drive. Ah, so cool, I love the sound of mechanical hard disk drives. So and we got now already a post screen and yeah it's time to check out the BIOS and the software. And here on the post screen we can see this nice logo from Texas Micro, Houston, Texas, USA, copyright 1997 Phoenix Technologies. 
ja, P675FX Industrial Computer BIOS version 4.05. So it seems that this is really a special industrial computer BIOS. CPU overdrive at 75 megahertz. So this is interesting. It's recognizing an overdrive here, but the wrong uh, clock speed. So I installed already the whole system. And I can tell you the real clock speed is 333 megahertz. We got here our 128 megabytes of RAM, half megabyte of um, cache memory, and yeah, let's enter here the BIOS. The BIOS is just common stuff, nothing special to mention here. Advanced settings, advanced chipset, so the only thing we can tweak here is a little bit the DRAM speed. Right now it's set to 60 nanoseconds, but there might be some possibilities to improve a little bit the performance of the system. But for now, I leave it at 60 nanoseconds. Also the ISA bus speed we can change here, but yeah, I will just leave everything um, on common settings here. Security, power options, of course, some boot options, server options to set here something, and yeah, that's it so far. Let's boot right now into Windows 98. Here it also our Adaptec controller is posting here with its BIOS and recognizing our Seagate hard disk drive. Yes, it's here. Drive C. Yeah, let's boot up. BIOS installed successfully. Yeah, and Windows 98 is booting. Great, and our Sound Blaster is also working quite fine and yeah. Just standard stuff now at Windows 98. Let's first open CPU set to check here our CPU ID. So Intel Pentium 3 overdrive at 332.5 MHz. We have a bus uh, speed of 66 MHz with a multiplier of 5. So you can see here the 75 MHz which were shown on the BIOS post uh, we are absolutely wrong. This might be some BIOS issues or something like that, but the CPU is working properly. Under DOS, this computer is of course a rocket. Let's check out some benchmarks from Phil's computer lab here. Speedsys shows here a Pentium 2 at 333 MHz as well, with a memory bandwidth of 166 MB per second. The Matox video card is also shown here and gives us 24 MB per second at the memory speed. The CPU score shows up with a score of 377 points. So let's try once Doom under DOS. I think this is also like running through the hell. And of course, we can see already. It's very fast. And at the end it is finishing Doom above 80 frames per second. So this is more than enough to play Doom here under DOS. Let's try also the Quake demo here under DOS before we try the Quake demo in Windows 98. And also here it's running like hell. Of course the strong floating point unit from the Pentium 2 here um, is showing its benefits here. And yeah, of course, we will get above 30. Here we have 67.2 frames per second. This is also a very nice value. But I'm looking forward to the Glide game later in Windows. What else do we have to check here? Maybe let's check 3D Bench. But of course, here it will also run through like hell with 196 frames per second. Let's check what Norton Sysinfo is showing here under DOS. It's showing here a main processor, Pentium 376 MHz, so it's not recognizing anything by the right way. CPU speed 831, whatever this might mean at the end for somebody. But yeah, I would say it's enough for DOS. Let's go back to Windows. Let's check out also 3D Mark 99. Here we can choose between our Matrox um, video card or our Voodoo video card uh, to perform some benchmarks. So basically, as I told you in the beginning, we are pretty much limited here by the CPU. But nevertheless, I'm interested on um, which video card here um, is performing uh, better. Uh, I think the reason why we would have here a difference would be the, the driver. Um, for each card here in 3D mode. Let's try first then the 
Matrix G450. Yeah, and this does not look so bad. Pretty high frame rate with 24 on the beginning, but at more complex graphics it is going down to 15. At the end the Matrox could bring it to 1791 points here. With the Voodoo card it looks already a bit better from the beginning on. The demo went a bit more fluently and at the more complex graphics it just went down to 19 frames. At the end the Voodoo could perform here much better and came up with 2231 points, which is 25% better performance compared to the Matrox G450. At 640x480 the time demo in Lightquake was running like hell. Yeah, and at the end we could get here a frame rate of 68.8. But in Quake 3 Arena, the CPU and our video card were already struggling a lot and at the end we could just reach here a frame rate of 8.8. .8. Yeah, but there is no need for Quake 3 when you can enjoy Moto Racer 2. This game is just a pleasure to play here and on those fast tracks you get quickly lost within gaming. Also Test Drive 5 is one of these good old games. Decent frame rates and nice voodoo graphics is what you will get there. Or watching MPEG music videos, also that is possible on our setup here without any issues. We got here an interesting setup with a very special CPU board and an overdrive CPU. Yeah, at the end I will give you now a nice 3DFX tech demo, uncut in full length. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.